good. We're going to have a couple more people trickle in. We have had quite a few um, participants sign up. Uh, so we'll just welcome them when they're here. But we wanted to get started. So thank you all for coming. I'm really excited. We have um, three of our school counselors here today uh, to talk with you about different ways to support your students, especially in our new virtual environment. Uh, so I think that we're going to kick it off today. Um, we have Mr. Josh Chambers. He's an eighth grade counselor and this year doing uh, last names A through K. We have Jill Donnelly, who's also an eighth grade counselor responsible for last names L through Z. And we have Miss Laura Wiley, responsible, uh, seventh grade counselor responsible for last names A through K. So we want to thank them so much for um, have for joining us here um, and I think that Miss Donnelly is going to begin. Hi everyone welcome. Um, I thought we would start this off by doing a little check-in. Um, so on your screen you'll see today I am 0 through 10 surviving managing thriving. So if you could put in the chat how you're feeling today on a scale of 0 through 10 be honest. Um, one of the reasons we're doing this as well is this is something that you can also do with your kids. You can, you know, use the surviving, managing, thriving words, or you can also, um, you know, change the words up a little bit. But I found that sometimes with kids, especially if they're not really in a talking mood, it's just good to see where they are for that day, um, especially in this crazy time that we're living in. Um, it's always good to have a little check in. Awesome. Great. So we're a little, little all over <laughs> the board. Sometimes I feel like I'm in the four or five also, and sometimes I feel more thriving and that's okay. So just a fun little, um, maybe not fun, but just a tool that you can do with your students as well. Um, just a zero through 10 check in always very helpful. So we're going to start with um, talking about academics today, and then we'll move into the wellness and behavior portions. So I thought this was really interesting. Um, there was a longitudinal, longitudinal research study um, found that in eighth grade, one important predictor of 12th grade GPA was students' grades, um, accounting for 35% of the model, as you can see. Um, obviously, grades are not the only important thing as you're moving through middle school and, you know, going to high school. But one of the most important goals during middle school is for your child to develop strong study habits, to continue to embrace learning, valuing education. So, of course, grades are very important, but um, the attitude your child has about school is really important in seventh and eighth grade um, because it's going to affect how they're learning and how they're, um, you know, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for, how they're pursuing their academics as they move into high school. So just a, a little study that I thought was interesting to show you and also um, just to keep driving that point home that study habits in middle school really continue through high school and that's why we push it so hard. Okay, so the current setting is a new setting for all of us, um, your students, us as, as faculty and teachers. Um, in regards to academics, we've found that online courses may require even more self-motivation and independent work than traditional in-person classes do. A lot of the kids are, you know, starting to become really independent. And this can make the same coursework much more difficult because the student has to stay on task without the student, without a teacher um, always explicitly guiding them from one exercise to the next. So, you know, something we're seeing is is maybe with students that have always that that academics have come a little easier to. This is proving to be a different challenge because it's a different format, it's a different setting. So something that, you know, you can do as parents and we can do as educators, encouraging that open communication between yourself and your child but also encouraging your student to reach out to their teacher and help encourage forming that relationship. Um, obviously, that's really hard sometimes to do virtually, but you know that those office hours that we offer have proven to be really effective with just 
creating a relationship. So that's just one thing you can um, encourage your students to do. Also boosting self-motivation by having those open, honest conversations with your child about how they're doing in a course. Obviously not always an easy task, especially at this age, but letting them know that you're there to help and that you're there to support them just goes a long way. Um, next, checking that student progress, and we'll go over that more specifically in regards to how Cooper Middle School offers that in the next few slides, so stay tuned for that. And then the last point, just remembering that your child learn that you are your child's learning mo role model. So no one expects a parent to teach your child calculus, but asking your student what they learned or just encouraging them to dive deeper into their learning um, is really important. And also, you know, make sure that you're reaching out to teachers and staff when you're out of your league. We're here to help. Um, it's an, again, it's just a new format for everyone. So. We're flexible, we're here for you, and we're here for your kids. Great, thanks, Jill. Um, so we just, we've just put together some, some tips. Some of them, you know, you obviously already know, and some of them are just worth repeating um, as reminders for you. But um, the first thing that we have here is just to help your child create their own routines. Um, we see a lot of friction when, uh, when a parent, it's going to be shocking to you, but when a parent creates routines for their child as opposed to helping their child create their own routine. So we have found the most success when, um, when you help them create something that, you know, very systematically that's going to work for them. So for instance, I just wrote um, an example of a partial homework routine where you know, they might do math for 25 minutes and then take a break, do history for 25 minutes and then take a break. And I think, um, you know, the important thing to remember is that whatever routine you're creating, just to stick to it. Um, the other thing is, as you know, if you've created something and you tried it for, you know, a week or two weeks and it's not working, then don't keep doing it. So um, be open to just, you know, going back to the table with your child and saying, OK, this is not working, but what will work? Let's try something else. Um, and that might sound kind of basic, like, oh, create a routine, but some students don't, they just don't have one, and, um, and they might not have the skills to create their own, so that's why, you know, we would rely on you, especially because you're at home with your kids when they're with us, we help them create routines um, at school, but, you know, I'm glad that we have this, this partnership. Um, the second tip that we have there is just to have check-ins with your child, ask them to show you something that they are proudly working on. Um, some students, as you know, will need daily check-ins, some students will need weekly check-ins, but you know your child best. Um, and I think <clears throat> sometimes we come up against a problem where we have a student who's like, stop checking in on me, you're so annoying. Um, but I know that parents have had luck with saying something like, hey, my expectation is that we have a check-in, but you get to decide what time we check in, what day we check in, and um, and I think I would recommend that you literally put that on the calendar. Put that on your calendar, put that on your child's calendar, and so then when it gets to that time, there's already an expectation that you're going to check in, so the kid doesn't feel like you're popping in on them or surprising them or, you know, breathing down their neck. Like, it's already, it's already been established that you guys are going to have a check-in at a certain time. Let them decide, and then it's kind of on them. You know, you decided that we were going to check in on Fridays at 3 or whatever. Um, and so I just, it, it, it is effective, though. And then the last thing we have written there is just that most children, most, not all, will automatically adopt your values. So help them to focus on the process, not the product, progress, not perfection. Um, perfection, as we know, is an illusion, and we have a certain number of kids that are wired toward that, but it's just not possible. So make sure that the messages at home are um, just really emphasizing their, their progress on something. Okay, next slide. Some other tips. Just stay calm. There are technical difficulties. Um, we know it can be so frustrating and kids just might need a parent to help them breathe or to help them regain perspective um, when they're you know, having trouble with their computers. Um, making sure or make sure that students are organizing themselves with a planner or some other method. Um, I know all Cooper students got a planner. Um, some are using it, some are not. Some need to be using it, but they're not. 
uh, some kids are intuitively organizers. You you know this. You know you might even have those kids. You've never had to tell them how to schedule something or how to make a routine or how to organize their folders. You know they're all like super color coded and like sticky note crazy. Um, but some need help. You know, and, and just like anything else, organization is a skill, which means that it can be taught, it can be practiced, and kids can get better at it. So, but they 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 might need your help. So make sure that um, that they're staying organized with all their stuff. And um, just that last thing just says that students should still have some sort of schedule for their Mondays, even though they don't have classes. Sometimes students have a really hard time with this whole getting in routine, getting out of routine, getting in routine, getting out of routine. So if they keep some sort of routine on Mondays, that has been, um, we've seen that, that that's helpful for some kids. And I think next is Josh. Yes, thanks, Laura. Uh, welcome, parents. Um, you know, to continue reinforcing this academic piece with the other counselors, um, one of the most common things I hear, and I think it's kind of common among counselors from parents, is that you know they wish that teachers could follow or keep them updated uh, more regularly with um, student progress and student performance. Um, so we just kind of, again, want to highlight the tools that we already have in place that help you do that in your own time. Um, and they're you know quite thorough uh, tools. Uh, one majorly just your parent sys account. Um, although assignments are graded in Schoology, sys is the grade book of record. Um, having conversations with your student, with um, kind of like Miss Wiley was saying, setting up regular check-ins, knowing we're going to meet at this time. We're going to sit around the computer and we'll go into both our screens um, and look and see what's going on in there. Um, sys also has a great feature: weekly progress reports are sent including snapshots of letter grades um, and then a full breakdown of those grades depending on what you might have questions about uh, and remember that using counselors as liaisons if you ever want to shoot us questions to go a little further okay the next slide academics um, I added this piece in here because I like to continue to remind everybody that you're your child's job right now is to be a student, right? No matter how challenging this virtual environment, um, your family is trying to figure out their way as well, and there's a lot going on. Um, but remembering that because that's their job, that is a unique way for you to get continue to get to know them um, as a learner. So everyone's gonna be different and unique in how they make it through this process. Um, and this is the opportunity to get to know them even better as they're discovering the best ways that they learn, figuring out the virtual piece, but continuing to grow into their own, um, their own way uh, as, a, as a scholar. Um, so I've included, and I will include this uh, article from USA Today that we used to help inform that piece. Thanks, Mr. Chambers. So we're moving into um, our behavior content. If you um, happen to attend the parent presentation that Michelle St. Germain led on adolescent growth and development a few weeks ago, you may remember hearing some of these points about behavior, but we felt like they were worth mentioning again, <laughs> because as you may know, this is a really challenging time in everyone's life as far as being a teenager. <laughs> um, teens characteristically communicate less with parents. Peers are super important to them. Um, at this age, children can be very sensitive and sometimes even moody. Um, and, and at this age, they also are considering some new points of view. So on top of all of this, add in a pandemic, this is just a really tough time, you know, in everyone's life, but especially for those teenagers who are, are changing every day. So, you know, just try to remember that when, when frustration levels are really high. It's a really good point to remember and keep in mind. Okay, thanks, Jill. Um, remember, the goal is not just to raise great kids. The goal is to raise kids to become great adults. Hold on one second. Sorry. Lost my train of thought. Okay. Um, as a teacher, I was a teacher before I did counseling, I would talk to parents every year, um, and some would share in confidence that they have trouble setting boundaries, um, that they have trouble saying no to their child, and I would just simply say, hey, I get it. It's not easy to say no and hold the line and 
uh, and stay consistent, but what kind of person am I helping to shape? Um, I don't just care about their current kid self. I have to care about their future adult self. I have to care about, you know, who they're going to be when they're 20 and 25 and, and older. And if I want them to be this amazing person in the future with goals and with values and um, with like a strong moral compass, I'm back these things now and I'm going to hold the line now. Um, you know, kids need boundaries and they're, they're not going to ask for them, except that sometimes I think in their behavior, they are asking for them. And a lot of times that behavior looks like, um, like aggression or just, you know, what we would consider out of control. Um, so they might not ask for them, but that doesn't mean that they don't need them. And that's up to us as the adults in their lives to, um, to make sure that they have those. Um, and the great news is that it's not too late to reinvent our parenting or our teaching um, if we want or we feel like we need an upgrade. And I think sometimes we just keep doing the same things because we've always done the same things. But if it's not working, it's not working. And I think we need to be open to, um, to course correct. Um, and we just need to do what works. Uh, Pray prize. So, you know, if you see something and you like it, it's okay to praise it. Some of you know, like, your children have this, like, love language of words of affirmation. And, um, and that can look, you know, different. That could be verbal words, like, hey, that's awesome, way to go, or it could be, like, a written note. But regardless, um, kids need our feedback, and we can't withhold that from them. Um, catch them being awesome, and whatever you do, consistent, be clear, and follow through on what you say, because kids really learn to trust adults when we say what we mean, and we mean what we say. Sorry, that's me. <laughs> so, um, also another point in part of talking about behavior is just being present is really powerful. Um, and I know all of you know that strong attendance is important. Um, I figured that some of these quotes were just helpful in driving the point home. Um, there, I, I found this quote on an attendance works. Uh, website, which is about, you know, being absent and the importance of attendance. And the quote was, by sixth grade, chronic absence becomes a leading indicator that a student will drop out of high school. And chronic absence is defined as missing 10% or roughly like 18 days of a year for more or more for any reason. Um, we realize that there's many reasons why students are absent or why they can't come. And if there's something out of their control or out of your control, obviously, you know, I think the most important thing is, is just working with them, making sure they're caught up. But, um, you know, in normal circumstances, if you're having kids, especially with this virtual format saying, well, I just don't need to go. I don't need to check in on Monday. I don't need to attend office hours. Um, you know, feel free to share with them some of these tips and some of these statistics. 90% um, of success is showing up. So if they're just there and getting that material, it will be so helpful for them when they're trying to practice on their own um, or just have any questions moving forward. It's just really important to just be there. Okay, uh, let's take a brain break. Parents and guests, if you would in the chat post A or B, if a dog wore pants, would he wear or she wear them like this, A, or like this, B? What are your thoughts? Looks like B is having a sounding lead. Definitely B. Nice. Yeah, this is pretty neat. Um, so again, parents, we, we're trying, we're working with teachers. They're doing a great job um, incorporating as much as they can into their curriculum, um, synchro synchronously these types of brain breaks. So having a chance to kind of check out and entertain the mind for a second. They're doing a really awesome job staying connected with students. 
We are also incorporating a lot of these types of things into our block four lessons to support the social emotional piece with students. Um, so we thought that fun and wanted to include it for you as well. I also think for what it's worth. <laughs> Although I did say A, if you're stepping into a mud puddle, A might keep the dog's legs cleaner. Okay, so the next slide, wellness. Um, just staying balanced. Um, hopefully at some point, since March, every family, every unit has had a chance to explore a different setting or a different way to stop the Groundhog's Day and mix things up. Um, I personally have seen the benefit of just changing my setting. Um, so we want to, you know, include these as a, again as a reminder to to stay balanced, to keep sleep where it needs to be, um, and if that means creating a schedule again with your students, uh, with your children, then then that's what you need to do. Um, food, making sure that. I found myself snacking a lot more because I'm home and the refrigerator is right there, but that's not a good thing, Mr. Chambers. You got to keep that under control. Um, but I am cooking a lot more, which is great, and I feel better for that. Just taking a walk. So I like this quote, getting more music, art, yoga, meditation, weightlifting, whatever, into our lives can help. But technology fasting while spending time in the natural world may be the most effective antidote. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I'll share that information as well with you. Okay, this slide was included in uh, a block four lesson, um, just reminding students about their workspace and setting up the most optimum uh, space to do their work synchronously and asynchronously. Um, so it's just making sure that the chair, you know what I mean, that they're sitting on is the right height, that puts their head and neck in the proper alignment and position to see the screen. Because obviously over time, this can wear and create fatigue um, and a myriad of other issues potentially. A stool potentially for feet to raise the knees, uh, not leaning back in their chair, uh, these types of things. So we thought it would be great to show you what we also showed students in the event you want to review the workspace for your child. Okay, and then we've included a link for you. That, continues to list student wellness tips and strategies, um, how to handle peer pressure. So this goes a little bit deeper um, into the virtual side of things if students tend to be, happen to be struggling with these things and what to do about them, uh, how you can support them. So this link is gonna offer information on how to help a friend in crisis, uh, quick tips to lift your mood, ways to bring balance to your life, um, and tips to ease anxiety. And with that, I believe we move on to Ms. Wiley. Oh, it's me. It's me again. <laughs> um, so this social media graphic, your kids have already seen. I'm sure you've seen this or something like this, um, you know, this year or in the past. Um, I think Mr. Rath actually sent them a note of this very graphic through Schoology. So hopefully they're very familiar with it. But we thought it was a really important reminder for everyone. Um, you know, I like to remind kids that what is on the internet stays on the internet. The internet is forever. Um, it's really different than when we were all kids and we were all in middle school. Um, you know, I didn't have social media like this when I was a student. Um, so it, it's just a different thing to navigate. And I think at this age, you know, being 12, 13, 14, they forget sometimes. Um, you know, they're posting things that aren't necessarily things that they may be proud of in the future. Um, so just thinking before they're posting, thinking um, that this is something that is going to stay on the internet. This is searchable, um, not to scare them, or maybe to scare them, I'm not really sure, but just to remind them that it's really important to be thinking about this as we navigate through this virtual world. And then um, we saw this uh, little graphic, I think a great reminder. It was created by a, pro a professor at Pepperdine University. Um, understanding and grace and patience are going to be really important qualities for all of us to bring to the table this semester. So I have this quote, <laughs> I'll be honest, I have this quote written out on a post-it note under my computer um, because I think it's really important to remember we need to be patient, we need to be understanding, um, I I'm trying to practice this with my own kids as well, but this is a really unprecedented time and what we're all learning as we go. So um, again, you know, please reach out to us if you're having trouble with just this setting and this format. We're here to help, but in the meantime, understanding grace and patience. 
go a long way. And Ms. Wiley is going to um, close this out with some resources. Yes, I am. Okay, so I have, I have three things for you actually. The, uh, the first two are websites, and then the last um, slide is just a bunch of books or three books that I think are incredibly helpful for educators, teachers, anyone working with kids. Um, you can see here that this says uh, this is something called the Family Dinner Project.org, and it's something um, that was recommended to me actually um, from a webinar that I went to. And they kind of, they offer like four different categories of food, fun, conversation, ideas, and advice. So for instance, uh, when you go to that website, if you click on food, they'll, they'll have like all these recipes that you can make with your kids. Um, when you click on fun, they have like games, crafts, activities, um, but really still like all around doing it with your family, with your, with your, um, with your kids. Conversation, um, they give you some conversation starters, which I think are always helpful, um, especially for some parents that maybe might find that a little bit trickier to start a conversation with their kid. Um, I think the current ones on there are something like anti-racism, um, how to deal with lost opportunities and resilience. So those are just the current ones, but if you go back in time, you can see just well, many, many conversation starters. Um, and then when you click on ideas and advice, what you'll find there are things like, I think right now it's like how to support your, um, your child through Corona times, steps to ease dinner stress, who doesn't want that? Um, how to beat tension and conflict from your family dinner time. So, um, but again, there's other things. If you go back in the archives, there's, there's tons of tips um, and just free help for, for parents. Um, the next slide, let me, over here. Um, this is something uh, unique to Fairfax County. They have something called the Parent Resource Center, the PRC. If you've heard of them and you've attended some other things, you will know how awesome it is. Like I am containing myself right now because they are so great. Um, it's, a, it's a free service. You know, you can see right there that there's a free lending library on all kinds of topics. They host webinars. They have workshops, they have free consultations. Um, the information that they provide covers ages K through 12 and even some in their, in their uh, pre-college years. Um, they cover things like college and career planning. They have um, material on all kinds of mental health issues, um, ADHD, dyslexia, behavior issues with children. Um, if you sign up for one of these, um, these seminar or these webinars a couple weeks ago, there was this guy that was hysterical and he was just very practical and very straightforward with parents. He, he has his own kids and now he has a uh, like a company that, that delivers um, parent programs of like how to help your kids with their behavior. And it was so it was so good, totally invaluable. Um, and if you sign up when you go to that PRC at fcps.edu, if you can sign up for their um, for their emails and you will get like all their latest topics and how to sign up. And I think I have this written down here. Just yesterday, I got an email um, saying that their latest webinar topic is one for brothers and sisters of children with special needs. There's one on tips for parents um, on helping their children navigate through the digital age. There is one on a college boot camp. Um, and then there's uh, this whole year, there's going to be this ongoing series about encouraging positive behavior. So just this year alone, I've already attended, I think, four of them, and they are amazing. I like, I just, I love them. So I would check it out if you haven't already. Um, and then lastly, these are three books. Um, I don't, if your screen is small, you can't see the little ratings that I put underneath, but they're all very well rated books. The first being How to Raise an Adult. Um, breaking free of the overparenting trap and preparing your kid for success. The second one is called Nutrient Power, Heal Your Biochemistry and Heal Your Brain. And the last one is called um, How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and Listen So Kids Will Talk. So the first one, straightforward, how to stop overparenting. Uh, the second one, um, Nutrient Power, is really how to use nutrients and how to use food to help students with um, things that they think are out of, out of their control. Like there's a lot of research on food and nutrients helping students um, specifically with ADHD and other things too. Um, and we don't, we don't give food enough credit, but when you read this book, you'll see like, wow, there is such a tie between what I'm putting in my body and how my body is expressing itself. 
And then um, that last book, if you haven't read it, again, it's amazing. It totally changed my life. Um, and, and I mean that. It's, it just offered so many tips for how to communicate with kids, um, how to help them listen, how to help them talk, um, you know, two things that a lot of us need as parents. So um, I think that's it for me. You can vouch. Yes, Ms. Donnelly, it's amazing. Um, but we're just opening up this time now for questions. Um, we don't have all the answers, obviously, but we will have some. And if you want to put them in the chat, we can spend some time now um, going over that. Although I think we are running out of time, right? But, and I don't want to keep people. If you guys have things to do, that's fine. You can log off. But if you want to stick around and ask questions, then we will be here. Yes, and I believe this, um, you know, this has been recorded. So if, if there's anything that you want to go back about, um, obviously you can listen to the recording or look at the resources through there. Thanks everyone for coming. I want to thank the counselors um, for putting on this presentation and sharing all these resources. Um, our next parent series currently is scheduled for next week and it will be focused on grading and reporting and specifically our new rolling grade book. Um, and we will also want to just see, get any feedback if there's any other topics that you'd be interested in um, for our Later the year, we'd love to continue these if we if everyone finds them useful. So thanks again, everyone, for attending. Yes, and I see some of the answers. Um, well, hopefully, some of the answers that are being posted in the chat um, regarding some of the questions about um, grade updates and Schoology and SIS. And another tip that I have um, is really encouraging your students to go to those office hours. I know. Um, I've had students sometimes go to their teacher's office hours and just say, I'm a little confused about what my what missing assignments I have. And the teacher just takes a one on one minute with your kid, tells them what they need to focus on or, oh, look, you're all set. And it just eases so much anxiety and frustration. So those office hours, personally, I just feel like are um, a gift during this time and I know that some students are feeling like oh, I don't want to be the only one going but it is so so helpful so you know if you're feeling frustrated and your kids are getting frustrated about the school G and the SIS and the missing assignments um, you know going to those office hours just really really help.